So, tonight I have a special treat. We're doing a real short and sweet episode here about the Green Children of Woolpit. Now, this is quite a famous story. It's been written about a lot. If you live in England, you've probably heard of this. There's many YouTube videos about it. But here on Paranormal Reading Room, we go straight to the source. And we have two sources for this incident, which took place in the 12th century. Uh, the sources are William of Newburgh and Ralph of Coggeshall. Uh, these guys were both Catholic monks. Uh, we really don't know much else about them. They did not have social media pages, but they both took it upon themselves to write histories of England. Um, a William's work, I believe, was a little more expansive, and they're not always writing about the same subjects, but oddly enough, they both included the same bizarre incident. Um, there's really no need for further introduction. It's such a strange story that I'm just going to plunge right in. A William's account came first, so we'll start with him. This is going to be from book one of his Historia Rerum Anglicarum. And he's writing this around the year 1189. Chapter 27 of the Green Children. Nor does it seem right to pass over an unheard of prodigy, which, as is well known, took place in England during the reign of King Stephen. Though it is asserted by many, yet I have long been in doubt concerning the matter, and deemed it ridiculous to give credit to a circumstance supported on no rational foundation, or at least one of a very mysterious character. Yet at length I was so overwhelmed by the weight of so many and such competent witnesses that I have been compelled to believe and wonder over a matter which I was unable to comprehend or unravel by any powers of intellect. In East Anglia there is a village, distant as it is said four or five miles from the noble monastery of the blessed king and martyr Edmund. Near this place are seen some very ancient cavities, called wolf pits, that is, in English, pits for wolves, and which give their name to the adjacent village. During harvest, while the reapers were employed in gathering in the produce of the fields, two children, a boy and a girl, completely green in their persons, and clad in garments of a strange color and unknown materials, emerged from these excavations. While wandering through the fields in astonishment, they were seized by the reapers and conducted to the village, and many persons coming to see so novel a sight, they were kept some days without food. But when they were nearly exhausted with hunger, and yet could relish no species of support which was offered to them, it happened that some beans were brought in from the field, which they immediately seized with avidity, and examined the stalk for the pulse, but not finding it in the hollow of the stalk, they wept bitterly. Upon this, one of the bystanders, taking the beans from the pods, offered them to the children, who seized them directly and ate them with pleasure. By this food they were supported for many months, until they learnt the use of bread. At length, by degrees, they changed their original color through the natural effect of our food, and became like ourselves, and also learnt our language. It seemed fitting to certain discreet persons that they should receive the sacrament of baptism, which was administered accordingly. The boy, who appeared to be the younger, Surviving his baptism but a little time, died prematurely. His sister, however, continued in good health, and differed not in the least from the women of our own country. Afterwards, as it is reported, she was married at Lynn, and was living a few years since, at least so they say. 
Moreover, after they had acquired our language, on being asked who and whence they were, they are said to have replied, We are the inhabitants of the land of St. Martin, who is regarded with peculiar veneration in the country which gave us birth. Being further asked where that land was, and how they came thence hither, they answered, We are ignorant of both those circumstances. We only remember this, that on a certain day, when we were feeding our father's flocks in the fields, we heard a great sound, such as we are now accustomed to hear at St. Edmund's when the bells are chiming. And whilst listening to the sound in admiration, we became on a sudden, as it were, entranced, and found ourselves among you in the fields where you were reaping. Being questioned whether in that land they believed in Christ, or whether the sun arose, they replied that the country was Christian and possessed churches, but said they, The sun does not rise upon our countrymen. Our land is little cheered by its beams. We are contented with that twilight, which among you precedes the sunrise or follows the sunset. Moreover, a certain luminous country is seen not far distant from ours, and divided from it by a very considerable river. These and many other matters too numerous to particularize, they are said to have recounted to curious inquirers. Let everyone say as he pleases, and reason on such matters according to his abilities. I feel no regret at having recorded an event so prodigious and miraculous. Hmm. Okay, that was William of Newburgh. And now we're going to hear from Ralph of Kogashal. This is from his uh, Chronicon Anglicanum, which he's writing, I don't know the exact year, but sometime in the 1220s. Uh, so uh, we're talking like 30 years after William is writing. So here's Ralph's account. Another wonderful thing happened in Suffolk at St. Mary's of the Wolf Pits. A boy and his sister were found by the inhabitants of that place near the mouth of a pit which is there, who had the form of all their limbs like to those of other men, but they differed in the color of their skin from all the people of our habitable world, for the whole surface of their skin was tinged of a green color. No one could understand their speech. When they were brought as curiosities to the house of a certain knight, Sir Richard de Calne, at Wykes, they wept bitterly. Bread and other victuals were set before them, but they would touch none of them, though they were tormented by great hunger, as the girl afterwards acknowledged. At length, when some beans just cut with their stalks were brought into the house, they made signs with great avidity that they should be given to them. When they were brought, they opened the stalks instead of the pods, thinking the beans were in the hollow of them. But not finding them there, they began to weep anew. When those who were present saw this, they opened the pods, and showed them the naked beans. They fed on these with delight, and for a long time tasted no other food. The boy, however, was always languid and depressed, and he died within a short time. The girl enjoyed continual good health, and becoming accustomed to various kinds of food, lost completely that green color, and gradually recovered the sanguine habit of her entire body. She was afterwards regenerated by the laver of holy baptism, and lived for many years in the service of that knight, as I have frequently heard from him and his family and was rather loose and wanton in her conduct. Being frequently asked about the people of her country, she asserted that the inhabitants and all they had in that country were of a green color, and that they saw no sun, but enjoyed a degree of light like what is after sunset. Being asked how she came into this country with the aforesaid boy, she replied that as they were following their flocks, they came to a certain cavern, on entering which they heard a delightful sound of bells, ravished by whose sweetness they went for a long time, wandering on through the cavern until they came to its mouth. When they came out of it, 
they were struck senseless by the excessive light of the sun and the unusual temperature of the air, and they thus lay for a long time, being terrified by the noise of those who came on them. They wished to fly, but they could not find the entrance of the cavern before they were caught. And that's it. Those are the two sources that we have for the green children of Woolpit. <laughs> we may never know exactly what was taking place there <laughs> or what the explanation was, but uh, something weird was going on that had a lot of people in the community talking. And these two guys thought it was notable enough to write down. William, William sounded a little skeptical about it, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. But he still decided that he should document it. Um, he thought it was important enough that he, he couldn't leave that out. And another thing worth noting is that Ralph said he personally knew the knight who took these kids in. Uh, I don't think he said he knew the kids, but he was at least in contact with the person who sheltered them. So this wasn't some rumor he heard. He had first-hand knowledge, basically. So we can speculate, but that's, that's what William and Ralph say happened. And, uh... <laughs> Like William said, I will let you reason on it according to your abilities. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a good night.